Hi, this is Scott Smith with some commentary for the Struy Hill video. So we're at the time lapse section now where you can see the painting being painted. Uh, I thought I'd also let you see the canvas being prepared with my trusty helper. Um, the Struy Hill viewpoint is um, up in the northeast of Scotland, which is near Dornoch. Um, this was actually a commission. Uh, which was going to be hanging in the west end of Glasgow and at the end of part two you'll see uh, the painting actually hanging in situ. This particular painting is um, really all about the abstractions of light and colour and it's also really quite big uh, compared to the average size of painting and I wanted to talk about this in part two uh, of scaling up your paintings. And not everybody really works as big as that um, and when they do they get sort of worried about it or um, kind of apprehensive about working on a big scale. Um, it seems very obvious to say it but to realise that you need a lot more paint and bigger brushes. I mean that's so obvious but in practice you really need a totally different palette, uh, you need different tools um, and you just need lots of paint. You can't be um, sort of frugal with your paint. I think when I was a student, my entire technique was based on paint preservation, uh, and things have changed a little bit uh, since I've made it my living. Um, but you really do. You, you, you've got to, when you've got a vast surface to cover, the, the same effects, if you're working with impasto, are going to be... Uh, diluted on a larger canvas so you n do need to if you double the size of the canvas the chances are that the thickest part and the thickest bit of paint on your canvas is going to be double the thickness um, so it's not just that the the paint's got to cover um, a much bigger area it's it's got to be used in, in much juicier uh, chunkier um, quantities if you're using impasto uh, a technique or any technique that might be similar to what I use. Um, yes, that does seem obvious, but other things about scaling up uh, would be that, well, number one, you cannot sit down when you're doing a painting this size. You've really got to sweep that brush across the canvas uh, with some um, ferocity. I mean, when you work big, you've got to you've got to develop the painting fairly quick um, in comparison to a smaller uh, piece. Um, you're almost trying to, to to uh, create, get the painting started at the same pace as you would a smaller painting uh, and that is specific to my particular style here. You've also got to make sure that you've got enough paint and mixed. I mean um, when you relate one colour to another and uh, you really want the mixes, enough paint in the mix so that you by the end of it, they do take a lot longer the bigger ones, by the end of it you're not sort of forgetting what colours that you had at the start. Um, I do like to echo the colours from the earlier la layers later on in the painting um, and that's not always possible to have that paint dry on the uh, wet on the palette uh, by the end of the painting so you need to take note of what colours you're mixing and uh, have it in your mind. I'll quite often work on maybe 10-12 pieces in between uh, two stages of a larger piece um, so it's quite important that you do remember the the concepts and what you were doing and what tubes of paint you were using. If you're using a limited palette on a larger piece, uh, that you remember what colours you're actually using. And that helps you relate your colours from one to another. I said that in a previous video. If you mix an orange with a magenta and a, and a lemon yellow, um, then you kind of want to... Um, create maybe some greens with uh, uh, maybe a viridian and a lemon yellow so that lemon yellow is a common denominator between two colors and uh, that's when just remembering your limitations that you're 
giving to your palette for overall uh, unity within the painting. So all these types of things are, are kind of amplified. You, you're doing them anyway on, on smaller pieces, but they're kind of amplified when you scale up. You really magnify the uh, problems that you might have in the smaller pieces. You can't hide in the bigger pieces. Um, especially in the way of sort of tentative uh, brush marks, you know, if you're really bold in some places and it's really quite tentative in others, it can really not make sense. And uh, in a previous video, I talked about the uh, variation of mark making that that's needed. And if you are covering a rather large area um, on a bigger scale, um, the different approaches of, of one area to another could could lead the painting to be disjointed um, and th that's also true of course for smaller paintings but it's just harder to stand back and, and assess what you've what you've done with one section of the painting to another. Thanks for listening to the commentary you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and check out uh, part two which should be out already. Thanks a lot.